In this section, we discuss how different types of joints work. This brief presentation was organized by Dr. Alim. The purpose of join commands is to link data across two or more tables. If the data are in more than one table, then the tables must be joined before the data are available to the analyst. There are four different ways that two tables can be joined. The smallest join is the inner join. Left or right join increase the size of the resulting table. Full join also increases the size further, and cross join creates the largest resulting table. Joins have a large impact on what rec records are included in the final table. Every join is a complicated where statement that filters the data in a particular manner. This slide provides the syntax for the inner join. It's the most common join in SQL code. The select portion of the code specifies that column names across the two tables. Column names should be unique across the two tables or must be prefaced with a table name. The from portion of the code specifies the two tables that should be joined. The reserve word inner join should appear in between the two table names. This is followed by the on statement which specifies one field from each table which must be equal to each other. The two fields must be equal before the content of the tables are joined together. Inner join requires that two variables in two different tables would have exactly the same values. This means that inner join will select the intersection of the two tables. This results in a table that's smaller or same size as the two starting tables. Inner join does not lead to an increase in the table size. For example, consider the two tables in this slide one containing description of diagnosis codes and another reports of encounters that refer to diagnosis. The description table includes text describing the nature of the diagnosis. The encounter table includes no text and just IDs and codes that can be used to connect to the description table. A join can select the text from the diagnosis codes table and combine it with the data in the encounter table. An inner join will lead to listing of all claims in which the diagnostic code has a corresponding text in the diagnosis code table. This is an example of the code that can join these two tables. Since table names are often long, to reduce the need to repeat the names of the table as a prefix for each field, one can also introduce aliases in joint statements. In this statement, letters D and E are two aliases for the diagnosis codes and the encounter tables. Joining the diagnosis codes and the encounter tables will allow us to see a description of for each diagnosis. For example, for patient 1001, we read from the encounters table that the diagnosis ID is 1. Then from the diagnosis codes table, we read that the corresponding description is acute myocardial infarction. Diagnosis ID 1 appears in both tables. The situation is not the same for diagnosis ID 6. There is no diagnosis ID 6 in the diagnosis table. So the corresponding encounter row will not be included in the combined table. Since the description of the diagnosis code is missing, 
all corresponding claims will also be deleted. Of course, this does not make sense. A whole lot of data can be deleted because the diagnosis has no description. Imagine what will happen if you are trying to send a bill for the encounter. To generate the bill, we need the description of the diagnosis. We will not have the description of the diagnosis in the combined table. Even worse, the entire record of the visit is gone. We won't even know that the patient has had a visit. Poof! No description, no data, no bill. Whenever inner joints are used, the analyst must be careful not to inadvertently delete the data. Always check the total number of records in the combined table against the records in the component tables. The left and right joints allow the field in one table to be always included and the fields from the other table included only when the IDs match. When the two IDs do not match, the record is still kept, but there will be a null value in place of the missing record. If the right join is used, then all of the records in the right table are included. Where the record has a match in the left table, then the content is included. And when the record does not match, then a null value is included. Following with the previous example, in the right join, we can display all claims from encounter table and their corresponding text from diagnosis table. All of the encounter table records are included. For diagnosis 1 and 5, the description is included from diagnosis code table. For the record 6, a null value is included for a description and for code. All claims data are still there, but the description of the diagnosis is null when the description is not available. Right join will lead to listing of all records in encounter table. Note that the diagnosis ID 6 is listed even though with description left null. In the left join, all records from diagnosis code table are included. Diagnoses that do not have an encounter are also included with the missing encounters having null value. The combined table will list all seven diagnoses, very different than the left join or the right join that we discussed before. For diagnoses that have encounters, the encounters are listed, and for diagnoses that do not have encounters, null values are listed. The combined table now has seven rows. In four rows, the encounter table is left as null. If the full join is used, then all of the records in both tables are included. Where both tables match, the information is listed. And when one table is missing, a match, then null values are inserted. Full joins includes all the records in both left and right joins. For code ID 1 and 5, the encounter of patient 1001 and patient 123 are listed. For code IDs 2, 3, 4, and 7 are included but no encounter information is listed for these codes. Null values are provided. For diagnosis ID 6, the encounter information is listed, but the description is now left null. Now the combined table includes null values in both descriptions and encounters. In cross-join, all records of one table are repeated for each record of the other table. Note that a cross join does not specify that any fields should match across the two tables. The combined table for just the first record of the encounter table will include all six descriptions. The combined table for the second record of the encounter will also include all six descriptions. The combined table for the third encounter 
will also include six records, each having a different description. Cross-drawing increases the data size considerably. In our example of three encounters and six descriptions, Cross-Join created a combined table of 3 times 6, or 18 records. In massive data, you will never see cross-joins. It will be computationally foolish. In smaller data, one might do a cross-join, but aggressively reduce some combinations using the WHERE command. This presentation was about how the join command connects multiple tables.